Number 47, letter A. Calculate the height of a cliff if it takes 2.35 seconds for a rock to hit the ground when it is thrown straight up from the cliff with an initial velocity of 8 meters per second. All right, so first thing is let's just kind of sketch a little picture. All right, so you got your little cliff here. As you know, I'm not Picasso, so please don't get disappointed in my drawings. So here's the ball. It's going to be thrown up with an initial velocity. So we'll draw a vector pointing up. It should be a little straighter. Why is it crooked? There you go. Well, it's still crooked, but what are you going to do? So the velocity here is going to be 8 meters per second. All right. And let's move that on over. And so if you were to think about the trajectory, right, it's going to go up, 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 and then it's going to come back down. I'm going to curve it up here. Obviously, it's not going to curve like that, but just to give us some perspective. And it's going to travel straight down, and then it's eventually going to hit the ground here, right? Okay. Um, a modern-day Bob Ross. Oh, my God. I used to love watching that stuff. Man, I was, like, mesmerized. I still find myself watching it on YouTube sometimes. I have no friends. So um, what we're going to do is uh, from here, uh, we have the velocity listed and also telling us the time it takes to go from the top of the cliff here, get thrown up and then go straight down, right? So the uh, time, we also know the time here. I'll write that in. It's going to be 2.35 seconds. We also know the initial velocity. Essentially, right, this is going to be the initial velocity. Um, it's going to be 8.00 meters per second. The zeros don't do anything in terms of your calculations, but in terms of the the uh, significant figures at the end that will influence uh, the sig figs. And now what we're looking to do is we're looking to somehow, given that information, uh, we're looking to calculate now the height, you know, of this cliff. We can call that, you know, delta y. You can call it x if you want. It doesn't really matter. The, y, the reason why you might call it y is because it's, you know, in the y direction. Uh, but you can call it x. It doesn't really make a difference. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> and, um... Yeah. So again, no friends. Uh, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to try to think about, you know, uh, do I know a formula that can find the displacement? Okay. Um, if I know just the initial velocity and just the time. Turns out that we can't. Uh, we need to know one other piece of information. All right. Now this is a little, um, so this is like a free fall problem, right? Now, what you have to know is anytime an object, a ball, whatever whatever it is, um, is in the air, there's it's always experiencing the acceleration due to gravity. And the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.80 or 81. It depends on, you know, whatever. Um, but um, it actually depends upon your height, you know, relative to the core of the Earth, your elevation, essentially. Um the units are meters per second. The reason why it's negative is because the acceleration due to gravity always points down, all right? So remember, acceleration is a vector. We have to take that direction of the vector into account by including the negative sign in our calculation. Now, can I calculate displacement by just knowing these three variables? And the answer to this is simply uh, yes, all right? So you go searching, you go hunting through these formulas, all right? And you want to try to locate one uh, where we can find it out, all right? So essentially, I'm going to use this one. Right, right there, number two. All right, it tells me delta x, which stands for displacement. Now remember, displacement is all that is, is just the difference between the initial point and whatever final point. So the way I'm framing this problem is that this is my initial point, and when this ball finally hits the ground, that's my final point. So what's the difference in height between these two? That's known as the displacement, all right? So this is gonna be, delta x is gonna be, or just call it x, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, you know, is going to equal the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. So plug in what you know, right? So the initial velocity, it's positive, by the way, because it's pointing up. So that's positive eight times the time of 2.35 seconds, plus then one half times the acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.80. If you put in a positive, guess what the answer is going to be? And the time again, so 2.35 seconds. All right. Now, all you got to do, just throw it on into that calculator. All right. So eight times 2.35, then plus, you know, plus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times then 2.35 squared. And we have a value here of negative now 8.26 meters. 
Now, the reason why the, uh, the calculator tells us the displacement is negative is because you're starting higher and ending lower, right? So essentially, if this is your start point, you know, right here, you essentially have like a coordinate system, right, with the origin here. And the negative just implies that the final point is somewhere lower than this initial point, all right? When you actually answer the question, though, if it's actually wanting to calculate the height of the cliff, is there any such thing as negative height? You know, Andrew, how tall are you? I'm negative six feet tall. What? That doesn't make any sense, right? You can't have a negative height, technically. You cannot, okay? Either you have some height, either it's, either it's some height or it's nothing, yes? Hopefully we can all agree on that. The negative sign just means, it's like a directional value. It just means that the height here is going to be relative to this starting point, it's downward. We're measuring the height that way, right? But if I started down here and I measured it in the opposite direction, it would have been positive, all right? So essentially the height is just the absolute value of this number. Now that's a very long-winded discussion for something very simple here. So hopefully you're still with me. So it's 8.26 meters. And uh, yeah, that's the height, all right? So that's A. Let's take a look at now letter B. Okay, so it says letter B, um, how long would it take to reach the ground, right, if it is thrown straight down with the same speed? Okay, so it's essentially the same problem, basically, um, just with one little tweak, All right? So we got our little cliff, here's the, here's the ground, and we know now that the height, I don't know if I'm gonna wanna use this though, but we know that the height here is gonna be about 8.26, you know, meters, um, the ball now is going to be thrown straight down. Now I'm going to show the ball, you know, over here a little bit. I know it's kind of floating, but, uh, you know, I don't want to, yeah. And anyway, anyway, it's the height of the cliff. All right. So now it's going to be negative eight meters per second. That's the initial velocity. Now, the reason why is because it's being thrown down. Okay. It's being thrown down. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's actually funny. My dog just, uh, he just laid down. Um, that's the command we use. So, hmm. um, anyway, uh, wow, I'm really distracted today. This coffee's fantastic. So, uh, what, what we need to do now is, um, we know the initial velocity. Okay. We also know the, the height, but, uh, you know, maybe I made a mistake here. I might not want to try to use that in my next calculation, but, uh, let's see if I can get around it. Um, we also know the acceleration. Again, the ball's it's in the air. I don't care if the ball's thrown up, thrown side, you know, thrown to the right, all the way straight down. It doesn't matter. Anytime an object is in the air, you know the acceleration. You gotta memorize that. 9.80. Okay. 9.80 meters per second squared. Um, we don't know the time. That's what we're being asked to solve for. Okay. So essentially, um, what we need to do now is try to find now how long it would take to reach the ground, okay, if it's thrown from the same height. Now, it appears to me that um, we're going to need uh, to be able to use this height. So you just want to go back and double check and make sure that you're pretty good on that. I, I know I'm good on it, but, um, you know, if, if, if you were doing the calculation, you just want to make sure you're, you're, you're positive about that answer. Um, what we need to do now is think of, okay, so I know my displacement. You got to be careful. Once you start calling this thing, this is a height. Once you start calling it a displacement, you have to plug in the negative sign again. All right, because again, you're, the frame of your problem is this is the initial point. It's gonna hit the ground at some point in time in the future. That's gonna be the final point down here. So the height here relative, since it's you're measuring it from top to bottom, it's a negative height, okay? Again, it just means, you know, it's just a sign. That's, it doesn't really mean anything except the sign. Anyway, uh, now I realize I can use actually the same formula. Now the only thing is though, it's gonna be a quadratic, okay? And uh, actually, could I use a different, yeah. Well, so if you wanna solve this in one step, you can use this formula. Now, the great part about physics is that there's usually multiple ways to solve the problem, all right? Um, you don't have to do it this way. You could do it in a two-step process, uh, where first you solve for the final velocity, you're gonna actually use equation number, where is it? In number four here, okay? You know the initial, you know the acceleration, you know the displacement, solve for the final velocity. And then what you can do is take that final velocity and plug it on into this equation, okay? And then you know the initial velocity again, you know the acceleration, and then you can finally find your time. Um, that way you might prefer, all right? I'm just gonna do this, it's less you know, calculations, I guess. 
uh, to do it this way, but this way is going to involve a quadratic. Now, I have a program on my calculator. You can look it up on YouTube. You know how to program your the quadratic function into your calculator. It's fantastic. Um, but uh, if you don't have that, I, I just mentioned about, you know, another way around it. So there's going to be negative 8.00. I'm just plugging in now the values, okay? So this is t plus then 1 half times negative 9.8 times time squared. Cleaning this up a little bit. All right, um, let's move this over. So cleaning this up a little bit now, uh, this is going to be negative 8.26, going to equal negative 8t. And then there's going to be minus now, that should be a 4.9, right? Or so, 0 0.5 times 9.8, yeah, 4.9. All right, so negative 4.9 now, t squared. Now what you're going to do is you need to get this, realizing that it's a quadratic equation, you're going to have to get this into the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. So take these two values and add them on over to the right-hand side. Why am I adding? Well, because they're both subtracted, right? So you're going to add the 8t, all right? You're going to add that 8t to both sides, and then you're going to also add the 4.9t squared to both sides. When you do that, it's going to work out to look like this now. 4.9t squared plus 8t minus 8.26 is equal to zero. All right. Now, when I do the calculation, I'm going to use the exact number I had from before. Not this rounded number, but the exact number when I plug it into the calculator. So I go to my program. I, you can do the quadratic equation now from here, but I have this program. So I'm going to plug in for A, it's 4.9. Okay, that's my A value, 4.9. My B value is positive 8, okay? And then my C value is this negative, oh, and I can't search for it, okay. One, bear with me, please, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, your captain is having technical difficulties. That's definitely not something you want to hear from your captain, though. Um, okay, so let me just write down the, the value here. It's 8.26. Oh boy, things are starting to get a little hectic. Okay, 8.26025. All right, that's the value I'm gonna be plugging in. Anyway, back to the program. Wow, what is going, okay, here we go. Program, quad, great. The A value, 4.9. B value, eight. C value, negative now, 8.26025. 26025. And I enter it. So we get two values. We get a negative 2.35. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. That's what we found before. Doesn't mean, that's not the answer though for this question, by the way, because it's a negative time. All right. And the other value you get, which is positive, is the 0.717 seconds. Okay. You always take the positive answer uh, when you're doing quadratic. There is a relationship though. It's not a coincidence. You might say, oh, is that a coincidence? It came out exactly like that time, but just negative. No, it's not a coincidence. It's because this value is negative here. And up here, this the initial velocity was positive. So um, anyway, uh, but that would be the time, okay? That's the time it would take if you threw the ball straight down. Now, hopefully that makes sense. I mean, if you throw the ball up, you know, and it takes 2.35 seconds, instead of throwing it up now, you throw it down, it takes, you know, three-fourths of a second. That should make intuitive sense. But that's how you do it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. If this video helped you out at all, and if you'd like to give us a hand, we'd appreciate it very much. And literally all you got to do just subscribe, hit the like button, and tell some of your classmates. That's it. Takes literally no time at all, and it allows us to produce more content for you. All right? I will see you soon. Thank you.